In this video, I will show you how to calculate momentum and impulse problems. To get started, we're going to need to uh, know some basic equation. The first is that momentum is equal to the mass times velocity. So if you multiply these two numbers, you'll get the momentum. The second thing you're going to need to know is that impulse is defined as the force times the time. So if you multiply these two numbers, you'll get the impulse. Also, the impulse momentum theorem tells us that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So if you exert an impulse on an object, you will change that object's momentum. And so these two numbers, impulse and delta P, are going to have the same number. Also, one other thing that can be helpful to understand is that the impulse is equal to and change in momentum can be written as PF minus PI. And if I move the PI to the left hand side, I get PI equals uh, PI plus, plus the impulse equals PF. So what that's saying is that the initial momentum plus the impulse equals the final impulse. Uh, equals the final momentum. So understanding that will help us to create a chart um, to organize all the data from the problem. So now we'll use this chart to organize the data from the question. Johnny throws a 0.482 kilogram football. So I'm going to put that where the mass is. So the mass is 0.482 kilogram and I'll put that over here as 0.82 kilogram with a speed of 20.2 meters per second. Okay, so it's thrown with a speed of 20.2 meters per second. Sam catches the ball and brings it to a stop. So that'd be zero uh, in 0 0.0282 seconds. 0 0.0282 seconds. Okay. Before I even answer the question in, in the problem here, I'm going to indicate my positive direction. In this case, my positive direction is to the right. So I'm going to make it to the right. I'm going to uh, sketch a picture and indicate direction the velocity. So I'm just going to use a, a circle here. I'm going to draw uh, to the right. So that's my VI to the right. And then um, the ball is coming to the stop. So the VF is going to be zero. Uh, and So there has to be a force to the left to stop the ball to slow it down. So I'm going to put draw kind of a little force diagram right there. Next I'm going to fill out my chart. Um, the first thing I'm going to calculate is the initial momentum, uh, which is 0 0.4.82 uh, times 20.2, and I get 9.74. I'm also going to calculate my final momentum, which is uh, going to be zero. It's going to be actually zero because it's not moving. Um, so let me fill that in here. So this will be zero since it's not moving at the end. And initial it's 9.74 kilograms meters per second. From here, I can calculate the delta P. So the delta P is going to be the final minus the initial. So delta P is the final minus the initial. So 0 minus 9.74 is going to be a negative 9.74. And that makes sense because the uh, momentum has decreased kilogram meters per second. Now the impulse will be the same number because of the impulse momentum theorem tells us that those two numbers uh, will be the same. I'm going to use Newton seconds for impulse. Those units are equivalent to kilogram meters per second, so you can use either, but because impulse is equal to force times time, I like to use Newton seconds. Now to get the force, we're going to uh, use our impulse uh, e equation, which is force times time, and then to find the force, it's just going to be the impulse divided by, divided by time. And the impulse is uh, negative 9.74, and the time is 0 0.0282. And if I do that division, I get 345. Uh, and so this is going to be 345 Newtons. And then um, from here, uh, we can do a bar, uh, bar chart just to make sure we really understand um, you know, how, how this, what's going on in this problem. So uh, the initial 
momentum is 9.74. Okay, so this is just going to be a qualitative, qualitative um, bar chart. And then I have a negative here, the impulse is a negative 9.74. So I'm going to put negative. Okay, so if I combine this positive and this negative amount, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get zero. This is going to be zero there. So now that we have this chart filled out, we can go back and answer the question. So the question is, what is the impulse delivered to uh, the ball by Sam? And that impulse will be uh, negative, will be this number right here, uh, will be negative 9.74 Newton seconds. And then what's the average force? And that answer is right here, uh, which is going to be 345 uh, Newtons. That's the force exerted on the ball by Sam. Now let's take a look at another question. Once again, I will read the question and fill out the chart. A 1,010 1, kilogram car, I'm going to fill that out here, 1,010 kilogram, so that's going to be the mass of the car, is moving on the freeway at 32.5 meters per second. 32.5 meters per second. The car brakes for 1.89 seconds with an average braking force of 4,110 newtons to slow it down. We don't know the final velocity. I will make the right positive and I'm going to also do a quick little sketch here. I'm just going to do a little box and sketch right we'll make that the initial velocity it is slowing down so I know it's still going to the right um, not as fast but the velocity is still to the right and then so since it's slowing down I know that the force has to be to the left so draw a, a small little force diagram there okay um, so now I'm going to try to fill out the rest of this chart by filling out the rest of the chart I'll be able to answer these uh, three questions um, below. So first I'm going to um, calculate the initial momentum. The initial momentum is the mass times the velocity and we get 32,825. So I'll put that over here, 32,825 kilograms meters per second. Then for the impulse I can calculate the impulse because I know the force and the time. Uh, force is 4,110 times 1.89, and I get 7,768. Now, because I have my sketch, I know that this should be a negative number. That should be a negative, and so therefore, my impulse is going to be negative. Negative 7,768 Newton seconds. And because of my impulse momentum theorem, I know that the impulse is also, uh, the moment, the change in momentum is also going to be negative 7,768 negative, a negative number. Okay. So then to find the final, um, uh, final velocity, final momentum, uh, I know that the change in moment, P final uh, minus P initial equals delta P and um, and so the final is going to be the initial plus the change in momentum and we can see that right here as well so if we add those two numbers we get the final momentum and uh, if we add those two numbers we get 225,000 and 57. And so the way I did that was I took this number, 32,825 minus 7,768, and that gives me 25,057. And so that's the final momentum, kilograms, meters per second. And then also from here, I can calculate the final, I can calculate the final momentum, I'm running out of space here, but the final momentum is mv final. So um, the 
Vf, Vf here is just going to be the momentum divided by the mass. And the momentum is 25,057. The mass is 1,010. Uh, and so the Vf is going to be 24.8. So this will be 24.8 meters per second. Okay. Uh, the next step is going to be the bar, bar chart. Um, so this is just a um, qualitative bar graph here. So I'm going to do, this is um, 30, about 30. 2825 okay and then this is 7768 this is a bit smaller uh, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller okay and then if we combine this uh, we get that 25 once again it's qualitative but I want you to see how this works here that the initial momentum plus the impulse gives you the final momentum now let's take a look at this problem what we're looking for we're looking for the change of momentum the change of momentum and that's going to be this number right here. So that's going to be that negative 7,768 kilogram meters per second. Then we're looking for this final momentum and the final momentum will be this number right here and that's going to be 25,057 kilograms meters per second. And then lastly, we have the final velocity, uh, which is this number right here, 24.8. So this is going to be 24.8 meters per second. So by filling out this chart, um, you're going to be able to answer all the questions that you need um, and more. Um, but I think it's good practice as you're learning to be able to fill out this chart completely. So let's take a look at another question. The combined mass of Sally and her snowmobile is 32, uh, 324 kilograms. 324 kilograms. She accelerates from 7.6 meters per second to 25 meters per second in a time of 18.7 seconds. Okay, so once again, um, I like to indicate the positive direction, I'm, and I'm going to make right positive here. Uh, and I am going to use this box to represent um, Sally in the snowmobile. So initially going to the right, and then um, accelerating, so going faster. So I'm going to go faster. And so that means that the force um, has to be in the direction that it's moving because it's going faster. Uh, so I'm going to put a draw a small little force diagram there. Okay, and then from here, um, I also need to include the mass because that doesn't change. Um, and then from here, I'm going to calculate the uh, initial momentum. So the initial momentum, mass times velocity, 324 times 7.6, and I get 2,462. Okay, and then I'm going to calculate the final momentum. So I'm just trying to fill out this chart at this point. I'm not worrying what the question is asking for. And by filling out this chart, I'm going to get all the information I need to answer this question. Uh, so the final momentum is mass times velocity, 324 times 25, and we get 8,100. Okay. And then um, to find the change in momentum, change in momentum, it's just going to be the final minus the initial. So 8,100 minus 2,462, and we get 5,638. 5,638 kilograms, meters per second. Impulse will be the same. because of the impulse momentum theorem, those two are going to be the same. And then to calculate the force, uh, we know that impulse is force times time. So that means the force is equal to the impulse divided by, divided by time. The impulse is 5,638 
time is 18.7 and we get 301 um, and that's going to be a newtons it's force so 301 newtons next I'm going to do the bar chart uh, we start off with um, 2462 kilogram meter per second of momentum so let me go do that and um, uh, next it looks like uh, it's a little bit more than half so let me or more than double a little bit more than double so let me make that a little bit bigger okay and then um, finally over here we're going to try to make it we're going to combine those two um, so it's going to be much bigger over here okay so uh, the next step is to answer the question uh, calculate the change in momentum okay so the change in momentum will be this amount right here 5600 38 kilogram meters per second. Calculate the impulse experienced by the snowmobile, and that will be the same number, right? That's going to be the same number because impulse equals change in momentum. Calculate the average force experienced by the snowmobile, and that will be this number right here. That'll be right that number right there. Okay.